Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. And oh my God, what an incredible day of World Cup football we have seen. Germany and Belgium knocked out. Morocco and Japan topping their groups and Spain and Croatia also joining them in the next round at the World Cup. A phenomenal day of football. Some amazing goals, some, some, some decisions that have caused a lot of debate, a lot of discussion. And of course, Belgium and Germany failing to succeed at another tournament. Germany back-to-back -back group stage knockouts in tournaments now. Incredible from Germany, a team that you usually expect to be there or thereabouts whenever a tournament is concerned. And of course, Belgium, who have been believed to have this golden generation failing yet again with Roberto Martinez, no longer the manager as it stands like. Incredible, incredible state of affairs right now and what a day it has been. I think firstly, you have to talk about Japan and you have to talk about Morocco. Now, before we talk about Japan, a lot of people are gonna talk about that second goal. Did it cross the line? Should it have been a goal kick or should it have stayed in? Now, initially when I saw that angle from the left-hand side, the side on angle, I thought that's for sure over the line and that is no way gonna stand. But that's perspective, isn't it? And it's a, it's, it's a spherical shape. Um, and it could have been overhanging the line and we never got to see that angle so I kind of feel like it was so so you're probably talking millimeters um, in it um, and Japan earning their luck because two big wins um, over Spain and Germany um, for them Costa Rica at one point were also going through um, which would have seen Spain go out um, <laughs> absolute madness but as I said Japan and Morocco deserve a lot, a lot of credit. Morocco beat Canada today to top that group. Croatia and Belgium obviously drawing um, their game um, and, and the chances that Romelu Lukaku missed. In the end, I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for him in the end um, because he missed so many sitters. There was a few of them where the ball just hits him and you just think you've got to, you've got to get that in. There's one where he hits the post and you think it's actually a good effort, but again, you've got to... I just felt so sorry for him. You see him crying there towards the end. Ah, oh, it, it, it was so sad. You felt for Canada as well because they've done pretty well. Probably could have and should have done better in that opening game against Belgium. And maybe things look a little bit different for them. But Morocco today, Ziyech has been incredible in these group stages and has really helped him. As has En Nesri, who got the second goal um, for Morocco and saw them go through top of the group. You've seen their fans absolutely tearing it up out there. And when you looked at that group at the start of the, the, the World Cup, you thought Belgium and Croatia were going to go through here. This looks like one of them where Belgium and Croatia will be fighting for the top spot. But no, Morocco have come through and absolutely smashed it, haven't they? They've absolutely smashed it beating Belgium, beating Canada, drawing with Croatia as well, unbeaten, they've only conceded one goal, they've scored four goals, doing really, really well, um, and yeah, surprising people to come out on top of the group. Now, I think with Croatia, you look at their team, and I'm not surprised to maybe see them, you know, not finish top of the group, you know what I mean, they're still going through, and you look at a lot of their players, a lot of their better players, their best years are behind them, but with Belgium, I thought, Roberto Martinez got that so wrong. For me, I was surprised to see Eden Hazard start in that first game for them. I know they won that game, but surely you've got to get the likes of, of Jeremy Doku, I thought was excellent when he came on in the second half against, um, against Croatia. I thought it was fantastic. You've got to get the likes of him into the team. Um, I think Trossard, who's been in incredible form uh, for Brighton, surely he's got to play. I think Lukaku will take a lot of the headlines because of the sitters he missed. I think they did miss Romelu Lukaku throughout the group stages. If he plays those games, you probably don't see him miss all of those chances that he missed in that uh, second half um, against Croatia. Um, and I think if he's there for the whole group stage, maybe it's a bit different. The talk will be about Lukaku, but what about De Bruyne? Not turned up throughout the tournament. Now look, I think ultimately, you know, the man that has to take the blame is Martinez. And I think they've wasted one of their best teams with Roberto Martinez, I don't think he's a great coach at all. Um, but I do think, you know, he could have, you know, got the likes of Jeremy Doku into this team, got the likes of, of, of Trossard into this team, instead of the relying on someone like Eden Hazard, who hasn't performed for an awfully long time. I thought that was really odd, especially when you're missing Romelu Lukaku and you're carrying Eden Hazard. Not great at all. Um, I also think in the midfield area, you know, 
why is Telemans on the bench every time? Um, that's a real strange one, especially when you look at how many goals they're lacking. Scored no goals against Croatia, no goals against Morocco and once against Canada. That's not good enough. Um, and it's no surprise to see Roberto Martinez walk away from his job. As for the other results though, Japan beating Spain. And at half-time in that game, I thought Spain are through, Japan are done. Japan just didn't turn up in that first half. They didn't turn up at all. But um, Murata, hats off to him getting his third goal of the tournament. He's amongst the top goal scorers. But then straight after the break, they come firing out of the blocks. In the first half, it was like death by a thousand passes. Spain would just not let them get the ball. Whenever Spain lost the ball, they'd quickly press, get the ball back. It was a lot of pressure for Japan. And to keep it at 1-0, fantastic. They picked up a few yellow cards in that first half. But then in the second half, they made a few changes. Duan comes on, who's already found a score sheet in this tournament. Scores within a three minutes of coming on. Um, and then Tanaka getting that goal, which was obviously largely debated. And they saw the win out as well. That's without starting the likes of, of, of Tommy Asu, who came off um, the bench for them. So absolutely incredible performance to come uh, on top of that group for Japan. Um, and I'm buzzing that they're through. Their fans have brought something to it. And I think their team has brought something different to it as well. It's always good to see some of the Asian teams doing well. Um, and Germany are the ones that are suffering here. And Germany, you looked at Germany, I thought Musiala was excellent. Um, excellent again today. They won 4-2 today. But that didn't matter. They just didn't have enough about them. And whilst they did win 4-2 today, that one all draw against Spain, that 2-1 defeat against Japan, they've lacked goals in those in those crucial, crucial games. Um, and therefore it cost them coming, um, you know, failing from behind against Japan as well, having taken the lead through that Gundogan penalty. So incredible, incredible day of football. So many talking points, so many different things going on. But Japan and Morocco, the heroes of the day going through top of their groups, Spain um, and of course Croatia joining them, but Belgium and Germany absolutely bottling it. What the hell happened there? Incredible, incredible stuff. And I've put a lot of criticism at the door of Gareth Southgate um, for his performances with England, but I suppose they're through, do you know what I mean? Some big teams are going out. Um, you get through to the next round. I think they've got center. I think that's going to be a difficult game. I wouldn't be surprised to see that go all the way to penalties, and that's a 50-50. Then potentially you've got France after that, but some big teams already dropping out, um, and some surprise um, surprises on the cards as well. When you've got the likes of um, you know Morocco and Japan still in there, and let's have a look at who they could potentially get as well. Let me just have a look at this World Cup playoffs. Morocco have got Spain. Um, and Japan have got Croatia. I actually think Japan are favourites to beat Croatia. With the energy and the press and everything that they have, I think they'll be too much for Croatia's old legs. And Morocco against Spain. I would have said Spain before today, but Spain's performance against Japan in that second half will give Morocco a lot of confidence. So, could be some further shocks on the card. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments below on an incredible day of World Cup football. For now, I'm going to get out of here. But I'll be back soon. See you in a bit.